Hi, today we're going to use the navigation pane in Microsoft Dynamics GP to assist us in creating a purchase order for a vendor. I'm using Microsoft Dynamics GP 2010 today, release 2, and I have my purchasing series pulled up by clicking on it on the navigation pane. Now some of you may be used to going into transactions up at the top on the menu bar and navigating through this particular method to create purchase orders, or you're used to having the transaction palette opened up and then clicking purchase order this way. We're going to do it a little bit different today. We're going to open up vendors from our navigation pane and have all of our vendors pull up in the list below. I'm going to click on Beaumont Construction because that's who I want to work with today. And you'll notice down below I can see some inquiry information while I'm working. If you're using the list to do your transactions, you get the benefit of being able to do a lot of things and see a lot of things right from your fingertips. For example, I can see the current balance that we owe Beaumont Construction. I see the last check date and the check amount that was issued. I see our payment terms. I see how much we've billed, uh, how much we were billed year to date, and how much we've paid year to date. Also, I can see how much is on purchase order right now. So what we're going to do is go up to the top. We have them highlighted, so we're working on Beaumont Construction. And I'm going to go to the News section, and I'm just simply going to click on Standard Purchase Order. And that's going to open up my Purchase Order window. And it's going to go ahead and populate Beaumont Construction in the Vendor ID. So I'll just tab through the fields, and then choose to select which items I want. Now I want to see all items that are set up for just this vendor, not all items in my list. So I'll go up to Options at the top and tell it to display only the vendor items. And now I can see that there's only two items I sell them, a black chair frame and a black chair or and a wooden chair leg. So I'm going to choose the black chair frame and I'll select my unit of measure, each. And I'm going to enter in four because perhaps I want four. And it's warning me that, hey, this is not the minimum order or the minimum economic order. So I'm going to go ahead and say OK for right now and tell it which site I'm going to deposit these in or which site I want to receive these in. So since I'm here, I'm going to find out what that economic order level is. So what I'll do is I'll simply just click on vendor item and it takes me to my vendor item here. And I can see the economic order for this particular vendor is indeed 50. So I know I will get a much better price if I order 50 of them. So I'll go ahead and order 50. The last price I ordered from this vendor was 988. So if I know what the new price is going to be, if there is a new price, I'll enter it here right now. Otherwise, I will just let the default and assume it's the same price. I'm going to say that I'm going to order these chairs for $9 a piece. So now my extended price is $450. Now you'll notice that my PO status is new. So this is not going to be considered an on order amount until I release the purchase order. And to release the purchase order, I'll simply print it and save it. So let's print it to the screen. I could email it to the vendor right here on the spot if I chose. Close that out and close this window out. Now you can see my on order amount is still zero, but I need to refresh. So what I'm going to do to refresh is click up on vendors and then I'll click refresh. So with Beaumont Construction selected and the item refreshed, I now see my on order amount is $450. If I want to see this purchase order or see my documents, what I can do with Beaumont selected, I can then choose to click on the Go To button and choose to view transactions. And when I do so, I'll get this window that tells me what my transactions are. So I can see Right now, these are all the transactions for Beaumont right now. There's a payment, there's an invoice, there's a credit memo that's on hold, there is an invoice that's been voided, I see one PO and another PO, and here's the PO, the $450 that I just created. So I could click on it, again I can print it, or I could choose to send it in an email if I like. If I open this window up a little bit more, and choose to populate that, I can actually see the PO details right below. I love working in List. I hope you'll give it a shot and work in List too. Hope this helps.